151 points. That's how many Penn State is projected to score at the Big Ten Championships this coming weekend in Maryland. And 151 is a big number. That's a lot. And just putting it in perspective, last year, Penn State scored 147. That's with bonus points included. This 151, there's not no consideration for bonus points, which we know every team, including Penn State, is going to score at, at the Big Ten Championships. They scored 147 last year, 141 the year before that. Now they're projected to do more than that. And I'll also say, looking at some of these draws, looking at some of these seeds, which is how, you know, the seeds are kind of how you come up with the score based on those projections. I think Penn State actually could end up north of 151 points. We're going to get into it. I'm going to get into every weight, how they set up in the bracket, starting with 125, where they've got True freshman Braden Davis, one, been one of the bigger stories of the year for Penn State, this true freshman. Coach Sanderson said, Kale said in the, the media day, that they had an idea in the summer that Braden was probably going to be the guy, but they wanted the process to play out with Robert Howard and the other 25-pounders. But that was not apparent to the outside wrestling pu public that had followed Braden Davis's career. Everyone knew he was good, really tough high school wrestler. But the season he's had is – Probably not what we expected, um, but it sounds like he's been wrestling up to expectations for Penn State, and he's been doing a good job in that. Out of the sixth seed, his draw is tough because there's just a lot of landmines in a weight that's this deep at 125. They qualified. Uh, Big Ten's going to send nine at this weight class. Uh, I think Braden is a, it will be a shoe-in to qualify. The question is how far deep of a run can he go at Big Ten's? He's going to have... Uh, a winnable, uh, like he's a big favorite in his first match against Lujan of Michigan State. But then he'll have Eric Barnett. Barnett's really tricky. I think that's actually a really tough matchup for Braden because while I think maybe Braden could take him down, some of the top work from Eric Barnett, he's really crafty. He's really good in scrambles. And I think that's a tough matchup actually for Braden Davis. Um, if he beats that one, he would. if he beats Barnett, he'd have likely Ayala or D'Agostino, two guys he's uh, guys he split with. So he beat D'Agostino. He lost to Drake Ayala this year. So toughish sort of draw for Braden Davis. But zoom out a little bit. He's the sixth seed. I think there's a great possibility Braden can get on a run and outplace that, um, outplace that sixth seed number. Because you look at guys like Patrick McKee, Caleb Smith, I think he's in matches with all these guys. I think there's a great chance he ends up um, outplacing that sixth seed. Though I don't have him making the finals at, out of 125. I do think he places pretty high, maybe even in that three to five range, which would be really impressive. So definite opportunity for him to move up. How much opportunity to go back? Not a ton. You know, Diagostino is the seven. He beat him. It looked soundly on paper, but it was actually a really close match right up to the end when Diagostino tried to throw and gave up takedown and I think some backs. But that was a close match. Um, so I don't think he can go much lower than six or seven personally. So there's a low prob probability he's below six. I think there's a decent chance he, he finishes above that. 133, Aaron Nagao is the five. Coming into this year, I would have said, if you'd have told me that, you know, in November, I said the five seed, that, that would have really surprised me. Looking at the, you know, the different wrestlers at this weight class, he would have been my, my selection for Big Ten champion. And he might still be. He's got a good shot at it. You know, he's going to have Jake Van D in his second match. He's a favorite there. That's the four seed. I think this is another weight where there's a real possibility Penn State outperforms their seed. He's the five. If he wins this bracket, if he gets second, third, that shouldn't surprise anyone. I think he, he showed he can wrestle with Dylan Raguson. That was a back-and-forth match, and Dylan beat him in overtime. Aaron Nagal can win that match. There's no, no question about it. Uh, so him outplacing that five wouldn't surprise me. And him finishing below five, like six or worse, that would even be more surprising to me. I, I think very highly of him. He has had, he has been, I won't say exposed, but, you know, he's taken some losses. Nick Buzak has beat him soundly, right? Uh, Dylan Schauber looked really good in that match. He's, he's not impregnable. There's no, no question about it, but he attacks the legs. He's really good from the top position. He can get turns and he can ride effectively. Um, he has some holes in his game, no doubt about that, but I think Aaron Nagal is someone that can place uh, well ahead of his, his fifth place. Now, 
If you're looking for an area where maybe they could drop back a little bit, Bo Barla is in the toughest way to Big Tens. Now, he's the one seed. He's undefeated. He's number one in the nation. But he'll have a tough, tough semifinal match against either Brock Hardy or Sergio Limley. Hardy's beaten him in the past. Limley is extremely tough. Uh, so I think whoever he wrestles there, that's a winnable match for that guy, although Bartlett is the favorite. And then in the final, Real Woods, Jesse Mendez, those are coin flip matches. Jesse Mendez and, and Bo Bartlett, that was, uh, if that's the Big Ten final, that was an incredibly close and even contentious match where, you know, some, I thought it was the right call, but others, you know, opinions vary. And a lot of people thought Jesse Mendez should not have given up that neutral danger zone takedown in overtime to Bo Bartlett. That's going to be a close match. So if you're looking for, you know, an opportunity where they might go down a couple rungs, Bo Bartlett could wrestle well and get third here. I mean, if he loses to Brock Hardy, wrestles back for third, that means he probably beats someone like Sergio Limley and Jesse Mendez or Real Woods. So you would take that. That would be a pretty solid day at the office, and he certainly can still win the NCAA championship. But that's an opportunity where they could fall back. Now, looking at 149, I think this is another – wrestler that could out wrestle their seed Tyler Kasek of Penn State he's the four he's got the five seed Dylan D'Amelio likely in that quarterfinal match and then Ridge Lovett the Ridge Lovett match I'll say is winnable although it's still even though it was really competitive in the duel I think it's kind of a long shot for Kasek but you think about Rachi you think about even Gomez who can be kind of hit or miss sometimes um, that I think he can outplace that fourth place uh, projection right I think he could you watch that Rachi match Rachi, it was Rachi early, then Kasek, and then Rachi got it done in overtime. I think that's a, a result that could easily be flipped the other way. Those two are really close to one another. And Kasek seemingly only getting better as the season is progressing. So that's another opportunity for Penn State to, um, to kind of up their stock or outperform a seed. Then you go to 157, Levi Haynes. I'm nowhere to go but down, technically. He is the one seed, but unlike... Bo Bartlett, I really don't see as, as much of an opportunity for him to get knocked off. Of course it can happen. Of course it's NCAA, it's the Big Ten, it's the toughest conference there is, and this is the probably second toughest weight in the conference, and I think it is the toughest weight nationally in terms of overall depth. It's incredible how good 157 is. But Levi Haynes, <clears throat> excuse me, has been just outstanding this second half of the season. And the toughest matchup for him is Chase Saldate, at least based on the results and what we've seen so far. And the odds of him seeing Chase Saldate at this tournament, it's really low because Chase is on the opposite side. He's the sixth seed. Saldate would have to beat Brayton Lee and some combination of Willowan and Michael Blockus just to get to Levi Haynes. Um, I just don't think that's all that likely to happen. So, you know, it's someone like Blockus or Lee or Luan that he's going to be wrestling in the Big Ten Finals. He'll have to beat Frannick. In his semi or Peyton Robb, he's already done that this year, and he did it dominantly. I think Levi's winning this weight. Um, I haven't been going through the allocations, but it's because for, for Penn State's purposes, all their guys have pretty much wrestled all year. So, one, they're very likely going to finish within the allocation range. Um, uh, two, they're, they're all going to get at large. So it's not as topical to discuss, like, hey, are they going to qualify this weight or are they going to fall within that? They're going to be well within it for, for all their weight classes. 65, Mitchell Messenbrink. This is, there's some huge tests awaiting. It's a huge rematch um, against Caliendo or Amin, but likely Caliendo. This was a great match uh, last time those two met one another. Uh, Cam Amin, th it's, it's really interesting because, like, well, what Cam Amin are we going to see? This has not been the best version of Cam Amin we've seen over his career. He's, he's definitely had better performances in his career and better seasons but if he gets it together I do think best version Cam Amin can give Mitchell Messenbrink a tough match I know that sounds crazy based on what we saw last time and there's a chance that that Cam Amin is maybe we don't see that guy this year that's possible but I think he's stingy enough and athletic enough to make life difficult for Mitchell Messenbrink best case scenario for but will we see that match because I don't think Cam's going to get by Caliendo. So we'll have that rematch, and then we'll see Mitchell versus Dean Hamity. I think this is an opportunity, another one where, you know, I picked, in a previous video, I picked Mitchell to win this weight class. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, it's, 
it's tough. It's a tough path because you got to beat Caliendo and then then Hamity, two really proven guys, good athletes, guys that can get to legs and finish, um, guys that have been in really big matches in their career. So you cannot count those dudes out, uh, but I think Mitchell outperforms his seed by one notch, winning Big Tens. But, you know, loses to Caliendo, then he's in a battle for third. But I don't think he can do much worse than third place, personally. Um, I think Mitchell's potential, you know, floor is, is very high. He's just that good. Storacci is one with the most variance, right? Storacci is the best 174 in the country. He's the best 174 in the Big Ten. But he may not show that this weekend. They may say, a wrestling match, see how it feels, injured to fall out. We don't know. Kind of all bets are still off. Coach Kale Sanderson was, um, I won't say it was noncommittal. I, I think they really just don't know, right? They're going to get out there and see how, Carter reacts to a wrestling match, see how he's feeling that day. So I don't even want to speculate if he's going to wrestle the full thing or if he's going to do a match and forfeit out. I don't know. All I do know is that Kale did not dismiss the idea of taking a Nolf type approach where he ends up forfeiting out. Um, but fret not Penn State fans, even if he does have to do that and he falls outside the top eight, which Big Ten is sending eight at 174, I still think it's a high, high probability or it's, it's not even a probability, it is 100% certainty that he's going to get an at-large bid for the NCAA tournament. So he's going uh, no matter what. Uh, but it's a tough path. You know, if he faces Rocco Welsh in that semi, that was already a close match. And if that's who he wrestled in the semi, this could be an opportunity where they, you know, have a one seed and they might not place it this way. That's, that has to be entertaining. And so that would bring them back down to earth. 184 is another opportunity for improvement for Penn State where they're the three seed, but they're going to have a winnable match in that semi if they get there against Lenny Pinto. Bernie Truax was right there in that match. And then against Salazar, if that's who the final is for Truax, um, provided he gets by Lenny, I think that's a, a, a winnable match for him as well. So you could see Bernie going as high as first. That shouldn't surprise anyone coming into this season. He was nationally the highest ranked guy at this weight class at 184 pounds. So him winning this weight shouldn't surprise anyone. I think he could do it. Now, how far could he fall? I, I honestly think he's the three. I, don't, I would be pretty surprised if he finished lower than third. E even, I know you'll say, well, Ryder Rogatsky already pinned him. I was like, well, true. I can't dispute that that happened and it could happen again. But go back and watch that match. Bernie was kind of, he was sort of handling business and then, Rogowski did what he does, and he flipped him over and pinned him. And, that, and that's, that's a possibility, but I would say odds are Bernie will have learned from that. And uh, I think third is, is his floor. I don't think he can do much worse than that. Aaron Brooks, one of the best in the world, certainly the best in the weight, best in the conference. He'll be unchallenged. He's the one seed. He's going to get first here, barring a major surprising outcome. And I feel similarly, I know I'm, I'm not rushing, it's just... There's not much to say here at 97 at heavyweight. Those guys are just the class of the weight. Greg Kerfleet's going to win this weight. Um, so I don't see him falling off. And these are two guys that could score a lot of bonus points. They don't have that round one match, but they could be getting bonus points in the second. And even really, the, you, these are candidates for bonus points throughout. So definitely additional points coming there. So Penn State is set up for a, a really – Strong showing at Big Tens, even if Carter Storacci isn't fully healthy and able to compete the whole time. Th my summary is Penn State is going to do well, and they could do better than the seeding projections. Um, that's my prediction. I think it actually, I think they eclipse that 151 if Carter Storacci wrestles, which is a, a really gaudy number. And, and there's been some really good teams at Big Tens, and over 150 is pretty rarefied air for, for the conference tournament. So... It's not a matter of will they win Big Tens, it's by how much. That's the discussion. I think it's going to be a strong show. And I expect a, a pretty vocal Penn State crowd. It's in Maryland. That's driving distance to a lot of Penn State fans. So I expect it to be loud for the, for the Nittany Lions. But uh, shoot me straight. How do you think Penn State does at the Big Ten Championships this weekend in Maryland? 